A stack of bills contains only $5 and $20 denominations. The total value is $140. We only need two points to graph a line, so let's find the intercepts for this relation. If we have no fives, we'll need 720s to have $140. If we have no 20s, we'll need 28 fives to have $140. In part b, we'll write an equation that relates the variables and state the dependent and independent variables. The amount of money from the fives plus the amount of money from the twenties must equal $140. The amount of money from the fives is 5f, where 5 is the value of the bill and f is the quantity of bills. The amount of money from the 20s is 20t, where 20 is the value of the bill and t is the quantity of bills. The equation that relates the variables is 5f plus 20t equals 140. We can reduce this equation by dividing both sides by 5. The equation we're looking for is f plus 4t equals 28. Neither variable has any special significance, so there is no dependent or independent variable. In part c, we'll graph the relation two ways. Since there is no dependent or independent variable, we can graph this as t equals minus 1 over 4f plus 7. or f equals minus 4t plus 28. We'll start by graphing t equals minus 1 over 4f plus 7. Label the x-axis f, label the y-axis t. Plot the t-intercept. Use the slope of minus 1 over 4 to draw in more points. The graph is discrete since we can't have fractional amounts of a dollar bill. Now we'll graph f equals minus 4t plus 28. Swap the axis labels and replot the points. In part d, we'll use the equation to determine if it's possible to have 12 $5 bills and 4 $20 bills. We have 12 fives, so plug in 12 for f. We have 4 20s, so plug in 4 for t. If the left side equals the right side, then these quantities are possible. Plug in 12 for f and 4 for t. Now we have 12 plus 16 equals 28. This evaluates to 28 equals 28. Since the left side equals the right side, we know a data point exists on the graph with 12 fives and 4 20s. If we bring up the first graph in part C, we can see that the ordered pair 12 4 exists on the graph. Or if we wanted to use a second graph in part c, we can see that the ordered pair 4, 12 exists on the graph. The points are inverted since we swapped the axes. In part e, we'll use the equation to determine if it's possible to have 18 $5 bills and 6 $20 bills.
We have 18 fives, so plug in 18 for f. We have 6 twenties, so plug in 6 for t. If the left side equals the right side, these quantities are possible. Plug in 18 for f and 6 for t. This gives us 18 plus 24 equals 28. This evaluates to 42 equals 28. Since the left side does not equal the right side, a data point with 18 fives and 6 twenties does not exist on the graph. This should make sense since the total would be $210 instead of $140. In the first graph from part C, we can see that the ordered pair 18, 6 does not lie on the graph. Or looking at the second graph from part C, the ordered pair 6, 18 does not exist on the graph. In part F, we'll use the equation to find the number of $5 bills if there are five $20 bills. We have 520s, so plug in 5 for t. Use algebra to solve for f. Plug in 5 for t. This gives f plus 20 equals 28. Subtract 20 from both sides to get f equals 8. If there are 520s, we need 8 fives to obtain a total of $140. In the first graph from part C, we can see that the ordered pair 8 5 exists on the graph. Or looking at the second graph from part C, the ordered pair 5 8 exists on the graph.